This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So far we've used ray tracing to create reflections and refractions. I've gone back to the glass scene. In this case, both the sphere and the glass surface are refracting, as you can see by the story background. The glass is also reflecting. There's a dim reflection here on the front. Another thing you can do with ray tracing, however, is create ray trace shadows. Before we move on to the shadows, however, I want to talk about a problem that sometimes occurs with refractions. Sometimes you might be refracting and you'll see that the center of the surface or some part of the surface is black. Now this is sometimes confused with shadows, but this is actually a refraction setting you have to deal with. To demonstrate that, I need to go back to my render settings window. So render settings and look in the ray tracing quality section. And right underneath reflections is an attribute called refractions. This is a limit on the number of times a ray is allowed to refract. So for instance, if a ray is shot out from the camera, hits this glass, it's allowed to refract up to X number of times. Now to make it all the way through the glass to the background, you have to have a fairly high refraction number. In this case, refractions is set to six. However, if I reduce this refractions number, say to one, that refraction ray will not be able to get through the surface all the way to the backdrop, and therefore you'll have a black pit. In this case, it's very big. But let's say I had this set to two. The refraction ray will make it a little bit further, so I start to see the top here. If I set it a little bit higher, the refraction rays will get a little bit farther and farther. However, even though I'm set to three here, I still have a big black pit in the center. And that black is not a shadow, but actually comes from the fact that because the refraction ray was not able to make it to background objects, it has nothing to put in this area of the refraction, and therefore uses black empty space as a color. So anytime you see a black thin refraction, it just means the refraction rays have not gotten far enough. You can imagine if you look at the surface closely, you can kind of estimate how many times you need to refract through it. For example, in the sphere here, it's pretty simple. A ray comes, say, from this direction, hits the front here. That's one intersection. That means it needs to refract one more time to get through, but then it hits this back surface. So in order to get through that and get all the way through to the backdrop, it has to refract twice, once from this collision here and once from this collision here, and therefore make it all the way to the backdrop. The glass here is a little bit more complex because it has an inner and outer surface. It actually has to have additional surface intersections. So it has to go to this front here, that's one time, then to the back of this front inner lip, that's two, then to this back side of the inner surface, three, and the back of the back lip, which is four, all the way through the back. So in this case, it has to refract at least four times. So the more complex surface, the higher your numbers have to be for the rays to get all the way through in terms of refraction. So going back to the render, if I want to get rid of this big black pit here, go back to my render settings window, I just have to keep raising my refractions higher and higher until I get rid of it. So we'll try four. And four is pretty good. Four looks like we almost get through everything. At least it gets to the backdrop, but again, here the sphere is showing as an empty space because it hasn't had enough refraction rays to get to the backdrop and to the sphere. So I can continue to go higher here, say five. Getting better. And you can see part of the sphere now, but again, the sphere is refractive also. So in this case, the refraction rays have to make it all the way through the glass and then all the way through the sphere, all the way to the backdrop. So I have to keep going higher and higher to get through both of those surfaces. Let's just say I go all the way up to the maximum 10. That's plenty to get through everything. I'm able to get through all the different surface areas of the glass, all the way through all the surface areas of the sphere, and all the way to the background. So therefore, I'm able to see the background through the sphere and through the glass. So remember to look at your refractions if you see any mysterious black pits. Now, the materials also have a similar setting. I go back to the hypershade and say, look at the sphere material. You'll see that in the ray trace options section, there's a refraction limit that's just below refractive index. So this works the same as a reflection limit. What Maya does is looks at each refraction limit, compares it to refractions here in the render settings window, 
it uses the lowest of the two numbers. So in fact, even though I set refractions to 10 here in the render settings, for that particular surface, which is a sphere, in terms of creating additional refraction rays, it has a limit of 6. So remember to compare refraction limit to refractions here in the render settings and make sure the lowest number is going to work for you. All right, so that's just a word about those black pits because often they look like shadows. Now if you want to create ray trace shadows, it's a whole different thing. Right now in this scene, there's a spotlight right here. And that's creating the main lighting for the glass and sphere in the backdrop. Now I can choose to turn on shadows here. Now if I am ray tracing, I am free to create depth map shadows. If I go to the attribute editor, and go ahead and go to shadows, and click on use depth map shadows for that spotlight. To render it though, the shadows will appear, but unfortunately the shadows will not understand anything about transparency. All right, so here's the depth map shadow. And it's wrapping up the wall as it moves across the scene. I see the shadow on the backdrop. I see the shadow through the refraction. Both surfaces cast a shadow, but the shadow is basically opaque. Now it's a little bit light because in this particular case, I add ambient light for fill. But in fact, if it wasn't for that ambient light, in fact, I'll get rid of it by deleting it. If I re-render, that shadow is completely opaque. So now that I have one light and one depth map shadow. You see that shadow is completely opaque. And that's not realistic for glass. If a glass casts a shadow, it should be a semi-transparent shadow. Unfortunately, the regular Maya depth map shadows cannot create transparency. So another solution is to try ray trace. So what I can do is go further down in the attribute editor for that light and go to the section ray trace shadow attributes. And right there is use ray trace shadows. So if I click on use ray trace shadows, what it does is it overrides the depth map. So depth map shadows will be overridden. You can't use those at that point. Instead, you're into the use ray trace shadow mode. Now in order to use ray trace shadows, you do have to ray trace. Now we're already ray tracing anyway because of refractions, so that's okay. As soon as you turn on use ray trace shadows, that particular light will create ray trace shadows. The ray trace shadows are a little bit different because what happens is the light itself will shoot out rays and those rays will bounce around the scene. Ray trace shadows will create very clean edge shadows. So if I render it now, I get very sharp edge shadows. And I also get transparency. So the ray trace shadow understands that these surfaces are transparent in the case of a glass of an inner and outer wall. Therefore, you get a semi transparent shadow in both cases. Now, again, the shadows are very, very sharp on the edge. You can get a soft ray trace shadow if you increase the light radius. And light radius is a way to virtually take the light, instead of having an infinitely small single point of origin, to spread out as if it's a wide light like a light bulb. So if I increase light radius, say to 0.5, re-render, I'll get a softer edge shadow. Now it's gonna be a little grainy at the start, and what you have to do to improve the result of the ray trace shadow is increase the shadow rays. The shadow rays is the sampling, and the more shadow rays you have, the cleaner the edge will be. So I go ahead and change shadow rays to 40, and re render. I get a slightly soft edge ray trace shadow. Now, the higher number of shadow rays you have, the longer it's going to take. Now, if the render takes too long, what I can do is abort the render by hitting the escape key on the keyboard, but I see it's already finished here. And what you'll see is a softening of the shadow, particularly at the top. And what's nice with ray trace shadows is when you have a non-zero light radius is the farther the shadow moves from the surface, in other words, the greater the distance is from the surface and the shadow, the softer it gets. And that's actually very realistic for an artificial light. Now I can go ahead and raise the light radius even further. Let's say I try two and get an even softer result. Again, by having ray trace shadows and a higher number of shadow rays, you're going to have a slower render. But what's nice is you're going to have a nice and realistic shadow, particularly for anything that's semi-transparent or transparent. But the unique quality is softening the shadow over distance. That's something you cannot get with depth map shadows. So if you want that, you definitely have to use ray trace shadows. And there we go. It's a pretty nice result for a, this transparent glass surface. 
Now, ray trace shadows, of course, also understand opaque surfaces. So let's say I go back to the sphere material and turn the transparency back to black. Now it's opaque. Ray trace shadows work perfectly well with that. So I'll change the view here and we render that. So if you do not have something that's glass or glass-like, you can use ray trace shadows. Obviously, it's a bit slower than depth maps. That's one large advantage of depth maps is they're very, very fast and very efficient. So there's a sphere, and here comes its opaque shadow, the slightly soft edge right here. So going back to the light, again, use ray trace shadows. That's something you can turn on to increase the softness, increase the light radius, which is a virtual width of the light and to soften the edge, but improve the quality, just raise the number of shadow rays. Now one trick is, you can raise shadow rays above the default 40, in terms of the default high point of the slider. If you enter a value above 40, say 128, what happens is the slider readjusts itself, so you have a larger range. This is true with most sliders in Maya. You can always enter a value higher than the default limit. The slider will reset itself, and in this case, you'll get higher quality. Now, once again, the render is going to be even slower, so only go as high as you need to for the quality you want.